The figure that we heard today was 60 million Americans secure their drinking water from uh, the national forest. Uh, the question, I think, is if, if anything, these WSAs and wilderness is the, the biggest resource uh, that we protect worth billions and billions of dollars is water. And uh, my, my question is, uh, what would be the impacts of, if the supply, uh, if, if tens of millions of acres of forest land are open to oil and gas drilling and potentially other polluting activities, uh, have a, the impact on that drinking water availability to, to those millions of Americans, to you, Mr. Secretary Babbitt? Well, I, I think that that's really the set of issues underlying uh, the adoption of the roadless rule. 50% of the national forest lands are today uh, open and being used for timber cutting, clear cutting, road building, oil and gas. The question we have here uh, is whether or not there should be, could be a different management regime for another 30% of the national forests. And the roadless rule was crafted to say those lands will be open for recreation. They will be open for motorized recreation. There will be access for forest thinning and forest health activities written into the rule. Uh, the decision that was made in the roadless rule was that there are two activities that are manifestly incompatible with vigorous, robust public recreation, ecological health, and watershed protection of upstream communities. Uh, and uh, the issue simply is not whether this is wilderness. It isn't. It's not whether or not Mr. Clean has access to the 30 million acres, uh, I'm sorry, to the 30 percent, 55 million acres under the roadless rule. You do have access. The question is, what are the minimum exclusions necessary to assure a robust ecosystem, including a watershed a provision uh, for most Western communities? That's the roadless rule. Uh, a, a process question, Mr. Secretary. Uh, the role of agency recommendations in, a, in this process that we're talking about, uh, what, and so the agency is making the recommendation, what should the role of Congress be, since this bill seems to be taking us in another direction? Mr. Gahalva, obviously, uh, Congress has the final say in the management of public lands. The question is how best to exercise that oversight. Uh, the reason I believe this bill is extreme is because rather than getting into the details of management prescriptions, it simply blows away the protections in terms of the wilderness study areas and by repealing the roadless rule. I thought Mr. Sherman's description of the roadless rule issues was really worth listening to because they're not wilderness areas. They have a whole spectrum of uses. And my advice to the Congress uh, uh, would simply be, uh, those are the issues okay. that should be debated in this Congress. Uh, maybe the roadless rule should be reshaped. But I think it's wrong and against the manifest will of the majority of Americans uh, simply to blow it off and say we're going to give it away to uh, extractive interests. 